Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how to achieve the chroma and also how to blend from dark to light. So be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, we're starting off now do with the freehand outline using a 708 Carbothella pencil there. Just using imaginary angles from that centre point. It's only a small study, it's 3 inch by 3 inch. And I've got a centre point in the middle of the board and a centre point in the middle, middle of my reference. And I just work from that point and get the proportions right. Now I'm going in now with the Carbothella White, still a small circles, trying to create texture, more pressure where it's lighter, less pressure where it's mid-tone. The underdrawing stage is just about checking the outline, changing it up, uh, creating that little bit of form ready for the rich colours. Now I'll be pencils quite a distance away from the point so it keeps it nice and loose and free flowing. It's just a case of just getting some pigment down there. Here's the colours I'll be using initially for this underdrawing. Just laying that pigment in, in preparation for the richer colours. I'll be talking to you in depth about the actual blending from dark to light. Just preparing the way, just using yellow ochre. Uh, brilliant combination, yellow ochre, warm red, uh, ultramarine blue, and I used green to desaturate the red in places. Uh, and that combination really does work. Now this is a darker green I'm using for the shadows and then using a cold red there and sometimes you have to use a warm red, you have to change it up, you just have to feel the temperature. Just adding these three pencils from the Caran Dash just to actually give it that vibrancy. Uh, there's a really rich in pigment and it really does make a difference. Uh, this is Chinese white I'm using here and just very small circles creating that texture again every layer builds up this texture and then just i'm glazing over now with the caran dash just to create that little bit of more sort of vibrancy to it so i'm just preparing my way building it up slowly but surely layer after layer it just creates that subtlety then because skin's not smooth there's loads of different textures in it Going over these richer colours now using the warm red, yellow ochre and the Chinese white, just sort of getting that sort of feeling of chroma now. So you have to sense what's shining through the skin, if you like, um, there's a glistening to it. So if it feels like it's like glistening and shiny, you need that sort of richer pigment like the Caran d'Ache. So you have to have a bit of forward thinking really, you have to put the light down first then glaze over the top. So my technique is light down first, glaze over the top and keep building it up using that white glaze, white glaze and it creates this texture that uh, the skin's got, that's how I tend to do it. Now I'm adding the cold red now with the warm red, just glazing over the top, just using the finger in there just to smooth it out but not too smooth. I'm trying to create that texture, but as you can see from the inset picture there, it's a lot darker than what it is. But you have to build that pigment up and then go over with the white. So it's all experience really. You get to know how much pigment to put in, but then when you put the white over the top, it creates the correct color. And then you're creating all these little subtleties of different light and warm shades. And it's just a case of a light pressure with your finger. You can combine, some part, times you put a lot of pressure on your finger, sometimes you put a little bit. It just depends on what the texture you're looking for. The two things I'm being aware of, the tint, which is how much white you add to the colour to create the correct sort of value, and also the chroma as well, so what's shining through. So there's a combination of two things happening here. Um, and it's just a case of just letting go open your heart, let go of the mind, because you can overthink it. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now for the shadow area here, I always go darker first, and then line it up with the white, so you, 
you have to be aware of that and that comes with experience how much pigment to put down but I need to get that pigment down first then when I put the white on I've got that tint I'm looking for now desaturating the red using green which is the complementary colour using that green creates that perfect shadow then now for the edge of that shadow where it meets the light I'm using the Carbothello white in very very small circles light pressure just blending the, the two together and this is where I'm getting the tint you see so I had to add that darker color first before I could get the the color I'm looking for the tonal value I'm looking for and then you can subtle up over the top with even more color here I'm using a Caran d'Ache white because it's fresher and more vibrant in that area so I'm doing the same as what I did with the Carbothello but because this is fresher I'm using that uh, Caran d'Ache colour but if you haven't got that the uh, Faber Castella white would work perfectly well now to stop your painting looking flat you really have to pay attention to the values so the darkest dark needs to be correct and the lightest light and that gives you that uh, sort of comparison then between the two to get the mid-tones right now when you've got shadow areas there's a lot of subtleties in shadows and that's what creates that 3d look so you have to be aware of these subtleties by opening your eyes to see the color squint your eyes to see the value um, but very very gently just keep adding those layers of white and glaze and white and glaze and this is what tends to create the texture for me of what I'm looking for and it's just being patient and build it up it does take a while to build up but it's well worth it because the actual uh, effect you get is is like skin I mean this is quite a close-up view of it because, but when you look back at the actual study it all melts and blends in and it looks more sort of realistic skin but you've seen a close-up view of this which is handy because you can see how I apply it uh, but it's just using those combinations and if you need to desaturate it the color is just using that little bit of green or blue you know because you can make the green by adding the blue over the yellow ochre so, so that's another way of doing it and you can create colder reds putting the blue over the warm reds so it's a combination really of just having a go playing around and just using these colors because it's all intermixable it won't go muddy because you're just using the primaries and the green just desaturates it if you're interested in actually seeing this study all in real time audio and video so you can actually hear and see me as I progress moment to moment and I discuss exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it please check out my Patreon. The link is in the description below for further details. Now my technique is not about getting everything exactly the same. It's not hyper-realism. It's creating realistic results by just open your heart, let go of the mind and letting that energy guide your hand. So what happens is the more you project this open heartness to the reference image the more sensitivity and energy comes back and that flows through you out your hands into your work now adding these details in now is just a case of opening up seeing it as a whole because everything is one together there's no separate bit so don't see all oh, that's part of a nose so you just try and draw a nostril it's all sort of oneness you're looking for the wholeness and even this small study you can sense the character of the person behind the skin and i'm sensing that so i'm going beyond what i'm seeing and i'm feeling rather than looking it's more about letting that sort of energy guide your hand really and it's surprising you just don't think at all while you're doing it and it just it just flows from you Now art for me is about my interpretation, it's how I see it, it's not trying to do a exact copy and putting every little mark the same, 
Um, could she marshal just have a photograph blown up and put on the wall? It's it's a bit more than that. It's it's sort of creating that sort of feeling rather than all the details. Because when you see a person, you don't look at every detail of that person. You look at the character. You look at the energy, and that's what I'm trying to draw and project from the image rather than detail it's more the energy of the person so you're more or less drawing the soul of the person if you like if you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow now just to discuss a bit about the chroma i put the white down first and i'm just glazing over here with a warm red but then i'm making it more zinginess by glazing over with lemon yellow which creates more chroma or more glow to it and then just subtly the tints then with the white and then just blending with the white as well so you're using that sort of combination it's it's hard to put in words really it's just a matter of instinct and just letting it just flow from you you know what to to do in, in each sort of stage it's just a matter of just opening up and just relaxing and just going with the flow use the green there to desaturate the red but in some areas it's more purpler and colder red so you just add that little bit of blue to it and it changes that warm red to a colder purpley red rather than using the green to desaturate it using the blue um, so it's a case of just keep sort of experimenting really and seeing what works and the subtleties there and the little bits of like freckles I'm using the green and the red together. Thanks for watching the video right till the end I really appreciate that. If there's any questions at all or any comments please leave a message in the comment section below this video. Now here's the actual study at the correct angle rather than being in perspective on the easel. Now if you would like to see any more of my work, please check out this link here. Bye for now, take care.